back to Nightlife, Lori Preston, Nightlife fan. And now, please welcome the WBC heavyweight champion, the youngest man ever to win the heavyweight crown, Mike Tyson. I gotta tell you something. First of all, I thought you were gonna come through there without the door being open for you. See, that's right. Now, the last time you were here it was before the fight, and you said you were gonna win that championship, and you did it. Yeah. How does it feel, man? How does it feel to be the champ? Youngest champ and the champ. I always, even when I didn't have the belt, only thing that made me the champion is now that I have the belt. I always thought I was the champ of the world. That was in your head, right? All the time. And in my heart, I always knew. You know, when did you know it in the fight? When did you know, when you, beside the attitude of having that, that attitude you have, when did you know in the fight when Burbick, you said, I know I'm going to win this? When we signed the contract to fight. <laughs> <laughs> I want to tell you, I, I was at the fight. I want to just show the highlights of it now. Just take a look. This is what you call it. action. Right, right over there, you see it? Okay. Right there. Now watch this action. This is action. Another good left hand by Tyson. And a right behind it, and Burbick is rocked. Burbick in trouble here. Burbick just trying to get through the round. He's hurt, no question. is everything that people could have hoped for in that round. Trevor Burbick, we should point out, has been down twice. There's another big shot by Tyson. Burbick in a heap of trouble. Down he goes. Oh, another big right hand, and Burbick is in trouble again. That was a right to the body and an uppercut to the head, and Burbick is down. This one is going to be over, I believe. It's over. That's all. And we have a new era in boxing. Now, I got to ask you something. When you came over to the ropes, we were sitting there. I didn't Did see you. Did you say hello to me? No. I said hello to you. I didn't see you. I said hello to me. I thought you went like this. Hey, how you doing? <laughs> Babe, can I tell you something? Yeah. I was backstage and they were telling me that you were there. I had no idea you were there. I knew you were there. How come you didn't know I was there? <laughs> I can't help you. I want to tell you one thing. Being there, we were right at ringside. I have been to a lot of fights, right? And I have never heard punches like I've heard your punches. I mean, I've seen punches, but I've never heard them. They were the loudest. Either you hit the hardest or that man was just like made of cement or something. They made such noises. You got it. Now, I want to ask you something, all right? In the corner, Kevin Rooney, your trainer, was yelling numbers. He yelled out yeah, numbers. Uh, 735, something like that. Um, What's going on there? Is he playing numbers? No, I mean, no. 721. So he's playing numbers. No, the fight's going on. The guy's no, playing numbers. Serious. Listen. Yeah. Um, and our, our training schedule, we fight by numbers. We call numbers out instead of calling the punches. Yeah. And if you throw, if you call left hook, right hand, left hook, if you're calm and relaxed and experienced fighter, you know what's to expect. But you, they have no experience and no idea whatsoever when he calls numbers out. Yeah, I didn't know what was going on. And the opponent thinks the same way you do. <laughs> in other words, there was a chance if I was in the ring, I might have lost because of that. Yeah. <laughs> Can I tell you, you know your yeah. friend Millie, that girl that works here? Yeah, yeah, sure. I know her from California. Yeah. Can I tell you things about Millie? No, you can't tell us about Millie. I'll just say Millie's just... Now, let, let me ask you. You're a champ now. That's so true. <laughs> now that we're talking about women, I want to ask you something. Now that we're talking about women, are the women, like, approaching you now? I mean, you know, you're the champ. Come on. No, I, I you're really 20 can't. years old. You're the world champ. It's tough being 20. <laughs> tough 
being 20? I can't get a driver's um, insure me. No one else can insure me. No. I'm letting everybody know this because I want everybody like Lord the London, all those guys that watch this show. I want everybody to insure people, you know, underage. And the liability is so high. I want them to know I'm, I'm going through heavy stress. I need help. <laughs> 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 I need help. Uh, <laughs> What'd you do, what'd you do with the million and a half bucks you made? I mean, you got a big future you're gonna make. This is gonna be peanuts compared to what you're gonna make. Okay, well, what'd you do okay. with the million and a half? It's well, a nice chunk. It's in my pocket for now. <laughs> See, you're the only man who could say that, and I know I got no chance of getting it. <laughs> you're gonna have fun with this? I mean, oh, you're gonna what? have fun with the whole boxing thing. You're gonna have fun when, it, I mean, you're gonna make, you're gonna know you, when the walkout, this, right? This is not fun. This is, this is serious business. Sure, I take, serious. Um, as a person, I, I just, an oh, ordinary 20 year old kid, I just take life as a 20 year old kid. But as a fighter and a champion of the world, I take it very seriously. Very seriously. And financially, I take everything very seriously. Mm -hmm. And I could assure you, I'm sure, like, from the history of professional boxing, we just won't check the record books. All fighters say the same thing I'm never going to wind up broke, I'm never going to wind up punchy. But I could assure you, when you first met me, I was successful, had all my marbles, was a millionaire. And when I finished boxing, and I'm an old man, if you're still around, Thanks. everything will still be the same. <laughs> so. Now, there's gonna be, there's gonna be the Witherspoon and, and Tubbs uh, fight, and you're gonna fight the winner of that. Yeah. All right? Can now. I tell you would you believe, um, one of them pulled out, I think it was Tony Tubbs pulled out. Now the Bone Crusher is fighting. The Bone Crusher? The Bone Crusher. Oh, yeah, he has a great look. I like The, the Bone Crusher. Fight. Yeah, he looks good, the Bone Crusher. He looks mean, doesn't he? The, the Bone, bone Crusher. crusher. Yeah. <laughs> the whole thing, Bone Crusher. <laughs> now, let's say one of them wins. Now, you take one of them out. Now you're going to fight Spinks. Yes. All right? You're going to take Spinks? Well, I really I, believe so. I wouldn't be in the tournament if I didn't feel I could win. I, how about people saying, like, Spinks, he's so unorthodox. He always throws everybody off because he's so unwieldy, the moves and everything like that. Well, it's not going to matter because I'm going to be stuck to him like I'm sleeping with him. <laughs> <laughs> and, and... Is there any... Is there any secret training you're doing? Do you do anything, like, you know, that no other fighter does? Besides watch cartoons. You watch cartoons, right? Yeah, I like cartoons. Why do you like cartoons? I get into it. You know, can I tell you something? Since I'm 20 years old and since I've been like a teenager, I've been like going through like a fast lane, like, you know, boxing and then going here, going here, being exposed. And, you know, I really, you know, I lose in touch with my childhood, like being a teenager, being a young kid. And I, yeah. it's hard for me to hang out with the kids in the street because I'm always training, you know, and going to the movies and stuff like that. So, you know, I stay in touch by watching cartoons, you know, and having that frame of mind. And I really, I, you know, because I believe in myself so much and I have so much confidence in myself, and I don't care when anyone says it, they say, the champion of the world shouldn't act like that. Shouldn't act like that. Yeah, you should act the way you want to. And I'll tell you something, you could hang out with me anytime you want. Can I tell you, I was talking to your girlfriend backstage yeah. about that. I said, I never see you out. When I go to parties, I never see you out. But you going to the Eddie Murphy party? Yeah, we're going to Eddie party. Murphy tonight. Yeah, I had a, um... Well, why don't you go with us? No, I have another date. But I, I had an invitation to go there. Hey, I you like still to show up later. Maybe, show up later. Maybe, I want to tell you what I said before I you fought the last time, right? Yeah. I said, this man will probably be the next heavyweight champion of the world. Did right? you say that? Yeah, I said Are that. You sure? That's right. Okay. You can check the tape. Now I'm going to tell you something else. I think you had the potential to be the greatest heavyweight champ we ever had. That's my Can I tell you something? Can I tell you That's a compliment I, I love to hear all the time. But as long as there were a Joe Lewis in America, it had never happened. You could be. Joe Lewis is fabulous, but you could be. And you can come back anytime. Thank you. All right? The champ, all right?